What's up? Hi, everybody. Um, I'm just going to wait here for a sec and let my man Paul join here. Um, yeah, we're just going to go through Stay Close, a little bit about the backstory and how we how we worked on it together remotely. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. It, it kind of took a crazy journey as a song, so um, yeah, I'm excited to talk about it with my dude who just joined. All right. Oh, somebody else sent a request to be live. Um, I hope you're all having a good day. I'm here in Seattle. We got snow for the first time. And it was, people did the usual freak out thing. I think that's happening in Texas now too. All right, let me see here. I'm using the future, here we go. Let's see if that worked. What up? All right, there we go. Look at that. I just learned a valuable Instagram insight that that's I could it. not I could not join you on my data plan. I don't know if that's just my server or what, but I had to connect to the internet. So here I am. Oh my gosh, I, okay, sorry sorry about running up your data charges. <laughs> I was about to run them up. It's actually maybe a good cold <laughs> group. What's up, man? Thanks for making time. I'm turning yeah, up, my man. pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah. Ha happy Mardi Gras. Today's a big day oh, down in New Orleans. Oh my gosh, yeah. People, I'm sure everyone's wearing a mask and being smart. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we were built for this. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was I was in New Orleans like not that long before the tour I was on that like basically stopped. So that was like one of my last travel memories with being really in your city. Yeah. Was that yeah. in 2019? When would that have been? I'm trying to. No, it was last year. It was like it was February. So oh. it was like right before everything shut down. Wow. Yeah. Um. Well, dude, I wanted to like just I wanted to say first of all. Thank you. I don't know if we've like spoken face to face since the song came out. I'm so thankful for your involvement in it and Man. kind of from from day one, like getting you into it. And and I don't even know if I told you this, but this this song started as like back in my former life in Barcelona. Um, really? I'd written this song as like uh, when Barcelona wasn't sure if we were gonna like end things or or call ourselves by a new name. Um, and this song was started as, I'm just going to play a little snippet from it. It started as like a bad weekend song, basically. And the only thing that survived from it was this wild sound that I just called jungle. Um, here. It's called Vices at the time. Really? Whoa. So basically the keys stayed the same, I think, but... But here, check this one sound out. Hold on, it's coming. I was like, jungle. Here we go. This one. That little whistle. Yeah. That made it to the to stay close like years later. And so like, well, at the time I'd written this song about all the things I considered vices, which at the time was like smoking way too much and drinking way too much and basically what the vices were to me wanting to be numb all the time blah 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 basically like a bad weekend song um and then uh it came like fast forward a bunch of years nothing happened to it and then um yeah when we when when we got on the, on the phone first time i told you about how <clears throat> to me this song was really about uh after my dad was diagnosed with cancer and it came into this um new life right like i picked this song up and and basically rewrote it and at first it was very literal about my experience with learning about his diagnosis and then it turned into this more accessible sort of um essentially like a love song um and i remember you not really knowing if it was like a romantic love song or what was actually like more of a paternal or familial love song um and i remember feeling like i think that's kind of like the sweet spot like it could be it could be this, this, uh, it could kind of go either way. And I remember you saying from a holistic song standpoint, like, tell me more about the story, like, um, in terms of how will we re rewrite parts of it so it won't alienate certain 
uh, listeners down the road and in fact like invite more of that understanding of what the song's about um, do you remember what you thought when you first heard it yeah it definitely struck me as a song that was about some sort of romantic love and it was extremely powerful it was depth to it though it didn't seem like just surface level like i could tell there was something deeper going on but i couldn't put my finger on it but i'm really intrigued i want to backpedal a little bit to how the process of the song happened because i didn't know it started that long ago yeah and and this stuff is usually really interesting to me the journey of a song so when you first started were you just vibing with a track or did the song idea vices hit you lyrically first like what came first in this instance Man, I want to say it was it was vibing to a track because at that point we were just stretching sonically, like we were just trying to figure out how to how to go back. We made this one record that was pretty minimalist and for the most part really recorded live, and so you couldn't hide behind a bunch of like production or whatever. It just had to be the song, right? And so right. I went through the exercise of just starting a bunch of tracks that were minimal and right. and you know basically like freestyling to try to figure out what i wanted to say and probably the reason that it didn't ever get it past the pre-production or you know demo phase was that there wasn't anything about like <clears throat> at the time like writing about my vices that was that compelling for, for, to me you know to want to share right so right it mainly just stated this but i never let go of it in terms of like the vibe that it was setting um so i'd say at the time it was way more about the vibe than it was the the content of the song Gotcha. So when you got Vice's the song as it was on its feet, did you let any guys in the band hear it? Did anyone react to it? Or was it just for you at that time? Yeah, man, I wish I could remember exactly the reaction because there were definitely a lot of songs at the time that I shared and everyone was like, cool, man. Like, <laughs> okay, it was just one of those. It, got it was cool, definitely, it was definitely one of those. It wasn't like, <laughs> it wasn't making any sort of mixtape anytime soon. <laughs> so then when you finally got the i guess the concept for stay close and it was tied to the narrative of uh, well i guess how much longer after that did you actually go through the loss of your father man that like from from the um you mean from like when it when i revisited it and read stay yeah close? it was probably about, about it was like almost two years it was two years yeah so, so usually at this point you, a songwriter has the choice of I'm just starting a whole new idea or you listen to one of these ideas you have before and all of a sudden a new vocal like you want to try a new vocal i know some people get fatigued by that and they just rather would just start a whole new idea that feels in the present but i'm curious what was it about vices that you felt like you should mute the vocal and throw something else at it man i think it's probably just the simplicity right if you if you thumbing through like um, canvases essentially that like uh, just have a basic outline to see what might pop up. And yeah, as soon as I've, I muted the vocal, but kept that little jungle whistle in there. It was like this, I don't know, it sent, it sent me, it sent me on this like bit of a, it felt just like being away from home, which at the time I was um, overseas and getting that kind of call when you're away from home was like pretty profound in terms of sure. feeling like, you know, a million ways so far away. Right. And, and I, it, it started as this exercise of like literally writing about that experience about being, um, feeling somebody's fear or mourning, like instant mourning basically when you're told that you have a terminal illness and um, feeling that remotely is just surreal. And, and I think it's like something that, you know, at the time didn't know it, but most of the world would be in that position within a year like of having to experience all these human emotions remotely and pain and suffering and um, how hard it would be to not feel isolated. And uh, hence what would become stay close, like that, that yearning right. to be like, I can't not be close to you. Like I need, I need to forever hold that. And, and um, the idea at least of what would become the course of so the chorus, like, changed it was one of those songs that had like three different choruses before settling on on what would be the chorus and i remember just kind of it has this rhythmic chant almost to it and i it was it was totally like i was just like making up words and like staying at that level of where the melody was and it finally started to feel like literally how it felt or how i was feeling of like stay stay up there like stay up there like don't don't leave me you know through this through the uh, the chorus um and uh yeah man it was just it was it was 
when it finally arrived, it was like, okay, finally, like it feels comfortable and it feels like I'm saying exactly what I want in terms of, um, yeah, like you know, our desire to be with somebody is never enough. Like it has to actually be like being with you and, and as long as I possibly can. And, it, and I won't take anything else but that. Man, what a great testament to not give up on an idea too. Um, it's, it's so smart for songwriters to just keep an inventory. You know, I know we want immediate gratification. We sit down, we want to just write the song and want it to all be great and just magical out of the universe. But sometimes it's just the process. You only get pieces of it every now and then and be willing to throw it back on the wheel. I've had so much good things come even in my career with my old band of just being patient with ideas. It's not its time yet. Give it a little more time. And um, it can it can really help a song and be yeah. what it's supposed to be. It needs to go through a process sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It's great. It's I remember it, man. the feedback that, that you kind of gave, like I, there were some obvious places. It's always about like, where can we trim? Where does it, where, where are we like, you know, saying something just to say it instead of it being like really important um, musically or otherwise. Yeah. Um, and I remember like the, uh, something that was huge for me when you started to touch the song was like, um, yeah, getting to the point, getting to that chorus, but, but then also like the, the rhythmic feel of, of what was gonna go on eventually. And I remember like, I'll play really quick, the, the beat that I had originally in there. Um, Cause it was like, you know, since its inception, it had plenty of like the atmospheric sort of stratosphere sounds of like floating and feeling, you know, like beautiful in that in that space, but it didn't have, um, it was never settled rhythmically. So I kind of had this like, almost like a, like a dance, for lack of a better term, like a dancey feel to the chorus here. Yep. So it almost had like this, like, I don't know, it was fighting, you know, it was fighting it in my, in my mind to, to be, um, is this like a upbeat pop song or is this like a stay in your feels song? Mm -hmm. It's trying to like nail it down the middle. But then I think when you heard it, I don't know if immediately you thought like, well, let's just keep it. Cause in, in my version, it was sort of living in halftime and double time. Um, and, and it wasn't like a comfiness there. It was more of like a rub. So I don't know if you immediately, immediately were like, oh, let's just take this, like, keep a lot of subdivision, but like really let the vocal, I guess, rhythm drive, push it forward and have the percussion elements be more like that pocket, like, you know, hanging back beat. I don't know. What do you think? Well, you know, I hadn't heard the beat in a while. Um, and the only difference is listening through the, the phone speakers. And I, I messed with this for a while, diving into the drums, is there's that upbeat feeling. You know, mm. that's kind of the feeling of, of the, the groove that you have going there. And then I just shifted the accents to be more in the downs instead of mm. the ups. And for some reason, it just did a little temperature change that just, just felt right. But it, keeping in that halftime world, I think, was great. And just where you kind of, where, where you were thinking. But just, I don't know if, the upbeat thing came in later on in the song, but I think at least established in the first half of the song, just having that a downbeat feeling yeah. uh, was the main shift that I did. But um, yeah, that was it. Yeah, crazy, crazy how like just a bit of tweak and a bit of like con condensing where appropriate really helps like tell the story or to myself even like to tell me myself back the story that I had initially, um, you know, laid out. And, and yeah, I mean, like, I, as I shared a little bit on, on socials, like the fact that this, this two year journey of this song and, and the, and the, um, the, you know, trajectory that I had in its creation. And then also like with my, my, my dad and our family of going through this, um, going through cancer with him and, uh, it always lines up this way, right? That like art can, is, is, ther is therapy, right? And you're able to really live out and like work through things that are real time in your life. And, and I've never had a song uh, do that before in this way in terms of his life ended right at the time that, that this song was um, coming out. And we did the video for it like a week before he died. And it was like a really, 
surreal but really positive uh, experience and and having this on to kind of carry me through that time was like I'm super super thankful for it and and what a, what a wild ride to 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 now have it out in the world and have it mean something totally different to somebody you know across the world but it'll always Absolutely. sort of have that um, special place so yeah man I'm, I'm, well I'm, done I'm really thankful for for your involvement in it and I'm actually curious like when you um, like I've seen, you know, when when you worked on the song True, like I saw like working with your dog in the studio, like whacking keys on stuff. And like when you when you had her stay close, did you try like an organic approach, a more organic or, or you, do you do you switch it up? Like, do you go diving into sample folders? Like what's your what was your vibe of stay close anyway? Yeah, no, I, I like to do both. Um, you know, I, I obviously my studio is a mess right now, but um, I, I'm in the middle of doing drums, too. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I have this little drum set up behind me. And then between that and doing program, I remember I have this bass over here. This is one of the tracks I did. This bass right here. Uh, so just making percussion out of household instruments, sometimes household little thingies. Yeah, uh, I have fun with that. And cool. um, just kind of treating those things as samples. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I used on this song, I used addictive drums. Mm -hmm. so some of the electronic programming from Addictive Drums and then just layering it with some of the organic things that I was recording here uh, seemed to be the right feeling for the song. Uh, yeah. So I, I had a blast with it, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, some of the stuff that, that when we send stuff back and forth and, and I like get to dive into like what you've done, um, I'm always trying to figure out like, because I know you do a good a mix of like organic and, and program. But I'm always trying to figure out how much like humanity you, you try to leave in it because that feels like something that you're good at in terms of um, little slight, you know, imperfections, not making everything right on the on the grid. Um, you know, do you try how intentional are you with that in terms of like the takes that you keep or are you like, I'm gonna get the idea down. It's going to be imperfect and I'm gonna go in later and like make it make it better. Like, how, how, how do you do you have like a mantra when it comes to that? Yeah, no, super intentional about embracing the mishaps, the happy accidents. Um, you know, a lot of times when I'm recording with people, they want to work out the part, get the part, then record it. Um, and my methodology is very opposite of that, which can be frustrating when I'm working with that kind of person. But I like just pressing record and go. Just mm -hmm. start trying things and 80% of it is maybe 99% of it is not usable if I'm going to be actually real about it, but going through it and just finding the things that just kind of happen along the way and then putting those together. Um, I mean, one of my heroes, Pharrell Williams, when it comes to groove um, mm -hmm. and just the, the methodology he took with the Neptunes was uh, finding that marriage between the electronic things that may hit the grid every now and then, but counterbalancing with just organic sloshy or letting it breathe. That's what gives it life. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously I'm from band world and that's, that was our way of making music anyway. It was kind mm -hmm. of just press record and go and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of work out the part afterwards <laughs> um, once you're listening back to it. Um, so that was, that was kind of the approach I took with the drums there. Yeah. Do you, yeah, both coming from band worlds previously, do you, how much do you, do you think is, is, I'm sure it's so much of it for me anyway, subconscious of like approaching songs, you know, and I know that you guys had a different probably decision by committee than, than I ever had, but, um, cause it seems like you guys, at least to the, to the outsider perspective, that it was like wholly collaborative, um, in terms of everybody bringing in their like special bag of tricks to the, to the game where everybody parties. Um, do you, you know, when you don't have like that in your, in your home, you know, studio at home, or if you're like collaborating with another artist, um, do you apply like a lot of the same band, you know, time when you're in a band methodologies? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's, it's fun to channel other people too. what you think yeah. they might do. Uh, that's a useful exercise I use a lot. So even though these days, yeah, I'm, I'm usually in the studio by myself when I'm creating for a project like this, uh, when I'm producing bands though, it's, it is that yeah. just pour everything into the swimming pool and let's see what floats. <laughs> um, but no, for this, it, it, you know, it's just running experiments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would Pharrell do? 
Let's try that. <laughs> that's if that's what Quincy Jones do. Let's try that. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, man. Well, hey, thanks for making time. And and Pleasure. I mean, there's another song right coming on the EP uh, called Yes and No that you just like blessed incredibly, and I'm excited to have that one out in the world too. I can't um, wait. That but let's so hear it fun. again, man. Yeah, I'm excited about it. And again, thank you for making time to uh, chat. And yeah, I'm seeing so many mute math comments here. It's just like, I, I, I wish we could have a whole another Instagram live about how you we'll do it again. People, people you t telling you to bring mute math back. But um, <laughs> all right, man. Be well. Let's talk soon. Cheers, Brian. All right, later. Congrats. Bye.